Keith Fraser has said of loneliness that it is a bad city inside you. Perhaps that can also be related to shopping malls. For I spy with my cyclops eye something that is large and urban and perfect, and beside the point, you will spy one certainly more in every city, Braille dots your road map. The mall is a way station for the fast food fetish, the new roadside attraction from which you will subtract your distraction. The mall awakens your awkwardness, it plucks at the strings of your pocketbook. They make a John Cage sort of silence. The mall will revitalize your skin, master your thighs, your marriage, your political poise, your children, your parents. The mall is a condo with parking lots that hunt you down when you attempt escape. Remove ticket, please. Amaze, amazed that it is always daylight inside, everything available for a price that you are not prepared to pay.
The Khan says, hey, Freud, we need to study a new culture. Where to now? Freud says, no problem, Lacan. The most vulnerable society in this universe is located on Earth. We can land, multiply, and disguise ourselves as shopping malls. Lacan says, word up, Freud. Let's do it. The escalator's tiny metal teeth are a kazoo, humming against his Achilles heel of anxiety. What to buy and why? My name is Dr. Farwell. I'm the doctor of sociology, art history, public relations, and architecture. This is a tale, an adventure, of two individuals who discover that they are long lost brother and sister. And when I say adventure, well, this is really the best we can do during the existence in a mall. These walls are boundaries on many serious and symbolic levels. <laughs> Let's cut out the crap and, and deal with the fact that this is all we have to work with. Meet Anna, experiencing the luxury of new and recent developments at the Stone Road Mall, circa 1980, a mall de jour luxuriating by a post-modernist fountain, a common mall feature for individuals to wish upon. Meet James, lonely and alone. He spends his time at the Willow West Mall, circa 1970, reading books upon books of other places and architectures. This time, in this case, Expo 67 predictions of a future world. James now inhabits a re-rendered facsimile to be reiterated time again, time in, time out. 60s equals skyscrapers, equals energy, equals flexing towards the clouds. Things, well, have relaxed. The mall is the thing. Modern buildings for the common person. We begin to feel that we are a part of progress and time is moving forward. Humans seem to always need to look at themselves by means of these skyscrapers. Malls reveal what we are like as people. That may seem a bit scary. Would individual psychotherapy be a bit useful these days instead? They should just stop the space program right now and get on with building a mall from here to the moon. 
it would save on transportation, but it would be difficult to get around the rotation difficulties. But why stop at the West Edmonton Mall? The sky is the limit. One day, and one day alone, James and Anna will meet. All those years alone, long lost brother and sister reunited in a mall. In order for these two siblings to have a positive future, they have to deconstruct their surroundings through conversations, of course, to invert reality and come up with a new one. Questions raised, thoughts pondered. Nothing can stop an inquisitive mind from removing walls in malls. The spirit of life lives. coffee shop are really nice too. Great. Let me get these things open. Gee, that really smells good. That strong? You can smell it already? <laughs> <laughs> so it is a nice smell. You really like it, don't you? Uh-huh. Me too. Well, I hang out here all the time. Do you? Even though I'm not that enthusiastic because I'm kind of used to it, but I like it. I would be here. What are you doing here? Maybe. Do you ever go to other malls? Um, I go to the Eaton Center sometime, and I've been to Stone Road before. Oh, I'm from Stone Road. Really? Yeah. Uh, the conversations between Anna and James might seem a little bit unusual but it is their way of coming to an understanding of the world of malls around them. See the songwriter warming up the lunchtime bout in the Eaton Center. There's a stage set up, and more than a dozen big names in the Canadian mall business are sitting behind Larry, tapping their toes or checking the notes for their speeches. Every major shopping mall in the country will have a booth set up for the next month. You'll be able to sign a postcard that says, we belong together and then you'll drop it in a box. Dick Sharp, the head of Sears, describes what happens next. The giant Sears tractor trailer trucks will, will converge on Quebec from the furthermost points of this huge country. And they will have gathered on the way up to two and a half million handwritten, hand-signed cards from Canadians. And they will be given over to Canada Post who will then deliver them, uh, deliver one to each household in the province of Quebec. The mall owners figure this campaign should convince the people of Quebec to vote to remain in the country because the message will be from people like themselves, not from politicians. Do you, uh, do you, are you concerned at all that at the mall, though, there's not a lot to learn? That there's no education at the mall, only trouble? Because we keep hearing stories every now and then about near riots in malls. Oh yes, there's, I have, uh, that's part of his, uh, you know, his upbringing, that there is nothing there in the mall. Um, when he was younger, he did start to hang out in malls, and I told him that, uh, you know, what, what are you getting out of it? You know, you know there's nothing there, there's trouble, the kids are uh, um, causing trouble with the adults that are working in the malls, they're, you know, being smart mouth with them, and, and uh, he prefers to learn thank God, then uh, go there and look for trouble. He's uh, aiming for a career in law, and trouble is not going to get him there. Penny, do you worry about trouble at the mall? Yes, my youngest son last year encountered um, some other kids a little bit older than him who chased him through the mall and actually went into a store himself and two friends and they took him through the back way. I'm very thankful to Collegiate. Life in a mall and meeting with each other are opportunities to ask relevant and irrelevant questions, like a school having no curriculum or a board meeting with no agenda. 
Well, does a camera work when it's in a forest all by itself? If there are no shoppers in a mall, does that mean there's no music? You thought you knew malls before. Dream again. Take this mall, for instance, and put it in a mountain forest region, or drop it into the ocean, or push it over Niagara Falls, or land it on the moon. I hope you're enjoying their conversation half as much as I am. Research, is this fun or what? I feel like rewriting my third doctorate thesis all over again. What happened? Where are their real parents? Why was time so cruel to these two individuals? One asks the question. One can't help but ask, was such a separation ever really necessary in the first place? One mother, two children, bookends between which she measures the shortest distance between what is and what was, budgets for ninja turtles, kites, and canned peas, tinned tender, PST, GST, IOU, I love you, her check, her life is in the mail, return to sender. She suspects serpents in her billfold. The cashier's hands fly around the store, tally up her losses. Later in the washroom, the mother peers through a crack in the stalls. A toilet lies dying on its side, having blown its brains out against the door, graffiti smeared with that red suet they pretend is soap, but they don't fool her. The mother watches others diaper their children, a symmetry of nip and tuck. Is it really supposed to be that easy, or is the mirror playing tricks? She stubs her toe on hindsight. Oh, Kathy, Ooh, yikes, please. Come on, just trust me on this, okay? Come on. I'll have one less Diet Coke a day if you do this for me. If you have one less Diet Coke, Patty, I will buy this expensive, inefficient underarm deodorant. You're a beautiful woman. Oh, you are too. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> wearing, Kathy? Um, it's called uh, Aztec Copper. Ooh, I like that. Oh, uh, it's a nice name, eh? That's why I bought it. But what I like the color, too. What number is it? Uh, 74, I think. Uh, it might I'm be getting, 75. I can't remember. I'm getting 73, and that looks too orange. 75. I yeah, like you that. need something with a bit more of a purple tone with, yeah. with your skin. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean I mean that in the best possible way. Oh, of course. Yeah. No, yeah. you know a lot about those kinds of things. Um, They've got a really good price here on their conditioner. Do you need your hair? Do I? Look at my hair. It's all dead ends. Uh, you colored it, didn't you? Yeah, you can't tell. It looks natural, doesn't it? No, I can tell. But Patty. then I know you really well, Patty. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I mean, you should get some of this conditioner. Okay. 
It's really good stuff. I'm going to grab a couple, actually. <laughs> You're Miss Mask and Sue. Right? I know. Well, shopping in Toronto is expensive. you got to mm, take it. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Through. Did you hear about Nick? Who? Nikki? No. What? How long has it been since you've been in touch? Well, I mean, it's been like two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks? Yeah. Honey, I don't so have time to happened. keep up with these people. So much has happened. What's going on? Oh, Victor has been so distraught. Oh, you no. wouldn't believe it. No. Apparently, her drinking has gotten worse, and he's found out she's doing drugs, too. I think it's Jack's fault, personally. Oh, you always blame Jack. What the hell is this? FDS spray Kathy. I thought... Patty. I'm going to put this back in the shop and pretend I didn't Just keep your nose it. in your own shopping cart. Kathy, it's an do? offensive product. What do I do? I shower every day. You don't need that crap. And that does it Come for on. you? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly like Jack. Oh, Not the, the new Jack. The new Jack? I hate the new Jack. Oh, he I sucks. really miss the old Jack. I know. I he know. Was so... He was an so animal. <laughs> that would be it. I know. Yeah. He's oh, great. Apparently, he's in Santa Barbara now. Really? Yeah, this is what I've heard. I hadn't realized that. Final knit? Does this stuff work? I thought it made your hair really hard. Well, if you spray it over your head, that's the problem. A lot of people spray it directly on. I always focus it to the exact area. No, don't do that because it gets in clumps and it, your hair just sticks. You might as well like use that dippity doo crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Hmm. What time is it? Actually, it's 3.30. I gotta grab my pills. Okay, well, maybe we'll see you tonight at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that would be great. Okay. Bye, Kathy. If I don't see you, take care. For sure. Okay, okay bye. bye. Books or thinner books? I like books with great big pictures and they have to say something too. I'm really getting into the hardware now. I'm developing my own personal interactive program. It can be interactive if it's just personal. No, no, it's a way to get personal with everyone around us. Everyone is too isolated. Yeah, locked into their own thoughts about everyone else. It's too one way. That's not a hairstyle, that's an idea. Ideas are in. Especially people who perform their ideas, that's where it's at. I don't mind existing in process time. It sets oneself apart from reality, just a little bit. I wonder if they have malls in Iceland. I don't know, I've never been to Iceland. I couldn't say. It could be a bizarre experience. Imagine being in a mall in the middle of an eclipse in Iceland. It would be even more wonderful. One can only dream can't As Anna and James become closer and closer, the reality of their situation becomes revealed to us, and perhaps to them as well instinctively witnessing the true fact that, by a surrealist, computer-generated vision, one of the malls that they have been spending their most time in is built on the gravesite their parents occupy. Where are your parents? Where are your parents? Where are your parents? Where are yours? Well, where are yours? I don't know, where are yours? Well, where are yours? Where are yours? Where are yours? I don't know, where are your parents? I don't know, where are your parents? I have no idea, where are your parents? I, I don't know. She scratches her polyester name tag. She wore it upside down today so that no one would be able to identify her. She hates this part of her job the most, telling the customer, no offense, but your credit is no good pushing the card back and forth, feeble with hope as the machine beeps disconsolately, as if it's wiping its mouth of something. Lately, the cashier has been reminded of Star Trek and those doors that open so effortlessly. No one ever gets stuck with a parcel or a bad check bouncing like a bright blue feeling. The customer's voice read from crying, There must be some mistake. The cashier shifts uneasily in her loafers, 
She knows her own credit is limited by time, necessity, greed. Shopping is a matter for mathematicians, itemized integers, plus or minus. You can never add it up the same way twice. During the day, a food court, and at night, they fill it with water and turn it into a swimming pool. Voila! So, tout le monde looks up at the ceiling, à droite puis à gauche, looking uh, pour voir un sign. Someone qui peut tell us that les choses sont encore normales, or that uh, it was just some small rat, qui, a small mall rat qui, qui a fait une grosse farce plate. You see, c'est la routine que j'aime, moi, that I like. I want to be sure que va toujours être le même. Quand mes amis puis moi, uh, on va au mall, like when you walk in, and the same avertissements sont là. You gotta hate staff turnovers. Except peut-être when you're in gros sale that comes along and really shakes things up. Tu sais, uh, tu comprends, you know, que quelque chose like a, un VCR ou un CD player, oh, sacré God, ça rendrait my life a lot plus facile. Ouais, 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 ouais. C'est pas facile, let me tell you. I mean, this boredom de la vie, so difficile to prendre. You know, tu sais? But that's just de la vie, hein? Alors, qu'est-ce que tu y vas de here? What que tu vas go from là, hein? Dehors? It's too cloudy. Oh, au moins ici, you can pretend il fait beau. En plus, ça nous cache du dreariness qui hovers en haut, all the time sans arrêt. Those gray skies, come, come a prophet de winter, casting their annonce, son implacable froid, inéchappable. Sign of le vide de l'espace, dank emptiness. Inconnu et terrifying.
It's not the biggest, but it is the newest. The much-touted Mall of America opened today in Bloomington, Minnesota. It was built by Canada's Gourmetian brothers, the same people who built the world's largest shopping center, the West Edmonton Mall. The Minnesota Mall will look a lot like its Canadian cousin, but the Gourmetians say they've learned a lot from their Edmonton project. Despite sagging retail sales, the mall's developers hope to cash in on America's favorite pastime in a big way. Hattie Kaufman of CBS News has this report. Where do fast food, automobiles and suburbia come together? The mall, a place 94% of Americans visit at least once a month. It's been immortalized. In this sci-fi thriller, the dead come back to life and mindlessly roam, where else, the local mall. What are they doing? Why do they come here? Kind of instinct. This was an important place in their lives. Despite a frightening and flat retail climate, Three, two, one, three. private developers in Bloomington, Minnesota, have created the world's largest retail and entertainment complex, the 4.2 million square foot Mall of America. There's one square foot of retail space at the Mall of America for every resident in the seven county area. This sprawling shrine to consumerism has 400 stores, 30 plus restaurants. It would be a three mile walk to window shop at all. To get an idea of the scale of the place, that's a human being down there. It's so big. You can see the mega mall from Ohio. <laughs> it's very big. We have a clinic. Doctor, dentist, urgent care. 13,000 parking spaces, 10,000 employees. We have nightclubs, comedy clubs, movie theaters. Determined the project won't become tomorrow's retailing ghost town, developers are trying something new. Stores line the outside of the mall, and in the middle is Knott's Camp Snoopy, a seven-acre amusement park. We have over 31,000 trees and plants inside of our park. It's the world's largest indoor planting. Tourists are expected to account for 30% of the park's traffic. Retailers who don't want to lose money to amusement visitors are using gimmicks of their own. Enticing storefronts, elaborate window displays, and a sporting good store where shoppers can play. It's a long way from the old don't touch the merchandise. I expect they'll have a very big opening. I think the real key will be a year from August 11th. Never before have four competing department stores anchored a shopping center. Many wonder if the mega mall will be a mega bust. We're in a recession, and in a recession with stagnant retail purchases. Times are going to get better, and, uh, and we plan on being here for a long time. Southdale, the first mall, opened right here in Minnesota in 1956. While shoppers loved being indoors, retailers worried about competing stores under one roof. What sounded like a mistake became a phenomenon. Today, 38,000 malls cover the country. America's oldest mall is well aware America's newest and biggest mall is opening just 15 minutes down the road. Determined to hang on to precious customers, Southdale spent over $60 million, adding more than 350,000 square feet. Consumers are benefiting from the competition with longer shopping hours and family restrooms for parents and kids. The locals are loyal to Southdale. Yeah, do you think they need a new mall? No. No. Maybe go there once to trial run, but you gotta yeah. come back here. Yeah. Will Elizabeth Arden's skincare salon replace the local beauty shop? Places where you would meet one another and gossip about what's going on in your neighborhood. Those great good places are disappearing, and mega malls are one major contributor. The fact that the utopia has now come to earth in the form of a shopping plaza enrages high culture. The fact that it's free enterprise, which has finally brought us utopia, doesn't offend me at all. It seems to me in the natural order of things. Mall of America has its own tour director who tells us shoppers are coming from Japan and Mexico. Here in the U.S., it's already the second most popular bus tour destination after fall foliage. And when we got here this morning, it was still dark, there were already teenagers lining up outside. That's all our top for feature file. Thanks for watching. Amid the argyle and polyester passions and chipped vinyl seats with bubblegum sticks stubborn, our conned conversations, 
I pretend it's Pernod, I ponder, not this watered-down, trivial, caffeine, suave, sugar-free fizz of some sort, buoyancy spilled upon the formal formica tables crouched together as if they were keeping secrets. I pretend I am Hemingway, hemming and hawing away at a story about bulls in the china shops of love, goring their horns through Nintendo glitter and a snide side of Super Mario Brothers, far away from this food court. I think that Europe must be somewhere beyond the glass elevator that goes up and down like an ice cube rattling. I glimpsed a world outside this world once when I was too small to reach it. The moon was unavailable for comment. Europe is a church, is a bit distant, aloof in its awe, and like the Brinks car in the parking lot, very impossible to get to. St. Catharines and it's really dark and dingy plus it has that it's carpeted the whole thing is carpeted they're trying to expand on the mall and they've been trying for like a couple of years now but uh it's a pretty terrible place to go most of the kids that hang out in malls too I think malls are uh, a large cause of the deterioration of the North American foot uh, if you've ever shopped in Europe, uh, you will know that many stores are in market places, uh, like Germany, where a lot of cobblestones, and walking on cobblestones, the foot is fully exercised. Many malls are terrazzed, floored, smooth, uh, slippery, and causes a deterioration of the foot. It's not exercised well, and then, of course, then that leads the leg and further on up. Uh, serious condition. In today's Friends and I were uh, in the Bean Center in Guelph last year, and uh, we were sitting in the food court. Um, we had purchased muffins and coffee, and um, we hadn't finished yet, and a security guard that worked there, obviously, um, came up to us and said, after a little while, we weren't finished our, our muffins yet, came up to us and said, um, shouldn't you girls be somewhere? <laughs> At the malls back home, just because I'm familiar with the area, with the people um, there. Um, it's more of a social place here, just because, well, I'm here at school, at university, so I'm not really, I am interested in the social aspect, but it's just, for lack of money, transportation, and because of my age now, it's easier to meet people at different places. So I really don't go to malls in the area that often. The market area was a real central meeting place it was a place where a lot of interaction happened. Bless and it was a place where there were no explicit rules set in force to tell people how to behave in that area. People could demonstrate, they could protest, people could get up on soapboxes and spout off whatever political ideology or political statement they wanted to make. And that was okay. Nobody would uh, shoo them away, nobody would say you're making too much noise. People could play a guitar in the street and make some money doing that. People could beg, and that was okay. But over time, like I say, a lot of the things have eroded. And a lot of those spaces that we used to have, like downtown areas, are no longer the central spots in our lives where we're interacting with each other. So the marketplace has essentially moved away from downtown, and the central marketplace, the central place for our interactions, has moved to suburban malls, and sometimes the downtown malls, but they moved into these indoor mall settings. Well, last Sunday, which was my birthday, some friends took me out dancing up at the Desert Inn, and uh, as we were turning the corner, I noticed that there's another mall going up, and I think, you know, what a waste of land. Where are they getting money, and they're taking business from downtown? Well, and these people need the business. Who needs another mall? Because there are other malls that are becoming vacant. 
Unless, of course, someday they do something progressive with these malls and make them into living quarters for people that are looking for housing. That could be a good plan. But, you know, how many are we going to have? Okay. Well, I guess I like them because uh, they're nice and cold weather. You don't have to go out and when it's really cold, and uh, you can always find a place to park, and it's free too. So pretty much always find a place to park. Oh, also I like uh, that they don't have doorways in the store, so you can sort of wander in and out. And, you know, look, you're downtown, you have to kind of sort of open the door, and it's a little bit more intimidating. But it's, it's a little like a like a uh, carnival or something in a mall, so it's, like, it's kind of a little more comfortable sometimes. What I really dislike is that they're always made with that horrible flagstone paving. It's really dangerous if you've got high heels on. Especially if it gets wet, or if you've got heels that are a little worn down, you end up slipping and tripping and you look complete dud. What I like about malls, though, is that everything's all in one place, so you don't have to travel all over town to get the few things you do need. Another dislike would have to be that the horrible music that they play. You can't get away from it. All the stores are playing the same thing. It's enough to drive you nuts. I, I like I like the air conditioned fact on a day like today. Um, something I, I, I don't like though is the fact that uh, it's too bright. It's too bright. Too many people. All right. Well, the first mall I was ever in I had to be about 15, and um, the main store was Zellers. And what I liked about it the most is that it had um, French fries and hamburgers on the counter, real ones. And at the same time, uh, right beside it, there was some really cheap um, One of perfume and, best ice skating and uh, nail polish. Edmonton so you could do two things. You could get really cheap perfume and the ice palace some french fries and in one spot. I once had an aunt. She had a mall right here. And uh, I'm, I, I don't have my glasses with me, but I hear that if I would go to a mall, I could get my glasses in an hour. And... Uh, and I, I would meet crazy people there. I like malls, shopping malls. I gotta go shopping now. I'm gotta go, gotta go to a mall. That the Eden Center is really a workhorse mall. Um, it's not the kind of place that you would want to hang around, but you could get a lot accomplished there if you know what you're doing. It's important to phone ahead to all the different stores and get the right price. The Eaton Center over here is very nice, natural light. You gotta like that. Malls. Is that a Greek word? Mall? Probably. Or Roman, I bet. Roman malls? Sure. I grew up in uh, Whitby. Next door was Mashala, which claimed to have the largest mall in the world for a very short period in the 1960s. And this mall didn't have a roof on it. Oh, that was a mistake. Well, the, I have two experiences in a, in a mall. One was in a... Well, it's not really experience, it's just it's more sensation that I, I experienced in a mall that the, like Eaton Center, when I, wa I walk there, I feel very uh, uncomfortable and I never, kn I never know why I feel so uncomfortable there until I realized it was because of the noise is, is it in this place. It's incredible. You, you walk there and you, you uh, surrounded by this very strange noise all the time and it's, you, um, you feel very, very uncomfortable. And another uh, experience I have in, in another mall, the Yorkdale Mall, and there it was, I, I walk in that mall and I, for the first time in my life, I, fe I, I feel I was comfortable in the mall. And I wonder why, I say, gee, how come, you know, I, and, uh, I hate mall, I don't like them, and this one, wow, you know, it's, and I realized because it was, uh, it, it had lots of um, natural light was coming through that place, like they have a skylight all over our, the, the mall, and it's, um, it's very pleasant, I like that place. I wish I can go there all the time. <laughs> in Oakville, 
The four vessels are computer monitored when they control tower. built the Oakville place small. Specially trained submarine captains guide deep sea explorers on opening day. I was driving off the QEW. And people sunken treasure, stingrays and coral. The were storming fantasy and reality. The fascinating oceans of past and present mall. Don't be surprised to see hordes and hordes of people crossing streets operating the deep sea attraction against red lights and expertise of hundreds of individuals. Submarine captains, tower controllers, scuba divers, hydraulic technicians, electricians, aquarists, and marine life specialists. Some kind of by far the most popular and entertaining church attraction of the deep sea adventure lake is the dolphin. Some kind of church activity. Visitors may take in the mall's own performance. No, Virginia, there is no Santa Claus. Not since closing time last night. Time was a thief shuffling into, then out of doors, revolving around the Christmas display. She claimed Santa was a pushover, so she picked his pockets while he recited her wishes back to her, a kind of yuletide stenographer. After this, Virginia headed east. Her stockings hung heavy and rich and over with care. So here we are in southern Ontario where the weather was best during the summer of 1991, which was a good year for the wine industry, by the way. Don't forget that. What we have to work with is, well, um, well, a lot of simplicity. It makes me feel Canadian all over just thinking about it. Back to James's original hair color, or is it? The unfolding, the deconstruction of this architecture that contexts our daily lives. Born, James. The room with the skylight. Are you sure? Well, it might have been a dream, but I'm pretty sure it's a room with the skylight. so we can talk to each other from anywhere in any mall. Any time, anywhere? Well, I have a theory that um, the frequency of Mondays in this mall changes with the incremental pitch of the figure eight of the sun. You know, that figure eight pattern the sun makes when it goes around the earth. In other words... Which is actually projected by the tilt of the Earth's axis. We don't have to know. It feels like I'm always looking south. Would I feel different if I was looking north? free, uneasiness. Some people out of the context of a mall feel uneasy. I don't think I've had enough coffee. These architectural motifs are starting to blend in together. Now, at what point does the pressure begin to build and this beautiful system begin to fail? If it fails, does it choose to fail? Suicide? Or, or is this a natural occurrence? Does failure need to happen?
a series of paintings which are faces in the landscape. All I see now here is faces surrounded by concrete, steel and glass. What I want to do is take these faces, put them back in the landscape where I think they belong. His toupee has slipped slightly, an argument he has lost with gravity. He sits next to the fountain, counting the number of pennies he spent there before the first bank plan was introduced. The polished pavement preens, splits open like his shirt, his belly blurts out, ignores the sinewy muzak of muscles. His cufflinks glint like gold teeth. He might sell if he could find a vendor. Make your own plant up. Uh, 
heavy wa heavy water plant up there at uh, King Carden? North of King Carden. Hmm. Nuclear. Bruce Peninsula. Bruce Generating Station. Is that what they call it? Yeah. But the plants were in the 50s. Was there much opposition? Was there much opposition to the time? Any new programs? No. Not until the late 60s did people start to protest about anything. Mm. Talking malls, are we? Uh, I avoid them like the plague. Uh, if I have to go, I have a Toronto walk, which is extremely fast, and you'd be quite a, having quite a time keeping up to me. Uh, in terms of malls, I they seem to be a high percentage women's clothes uh, uh, merchandise. Which, of course, naturally, I'm not interested in at all, and I'm inclined to be sarcastic about it. I like malls because I shop at malls, and I hate the mall or at the malls. They really bug me because they sit around and smoke in the food court, and then I go to eat my hamburger, and I like the taste of smoke, and it's really gross. But I like malls because my friends go to malls. But I'm not a mall rat, I hate mall rats. The first mall I saw kind of horrified me. I was uh, visiting Fairview Mall and I thought, gee, this is like science fiction. If uh, store designers and store owners had their way after an atomic war, this is what uh, life would look like. That's kind of missing. But that's negative. The positive side of malls is uh, there's lots of potential. Like, have you ever seen libraries? Uh, a gathering place, it would be a place uh, young people could have their workshops, video workshops, they could uh, have resource centers, so there's lots of potential. Um, and I, I think it depends on our society how we treat them all and what we uh, do with them in the future. Well, uh, there's a lot of malls in Vancouver because it's, uh, it's, it rains a lot. It's 
close to where I live, it's close to the Western Front, which is an alternative artist space. And the Kingsgate Mall is my favorite mall because it's got this sort of tacky stores. It's quite small and it has a lot of strange people that sort of hang around in this mall because it's in a very low income area. How are you? My favorite one. Possibly the worst job I ever had in my entire life was at West Edmonton Mall in a little place called uh, Mario's Fine Italian Food. It wasn't that fine, it was sort of like a cross between Fluffy's Pizza and uh, I don't know, McDonald's Italian Food. Anyways, I worked there for four weeks and it was depressing. People were rude and unpleasant. Customers were rude and unpleasant and also the tips were really bad. So I quit after four weeks. And anyways, the restaurant went under later so it was only open for six weeks in its entirety too expensive to be in that mall i guess i don't know where it went eckville or Broadville or somewhere who knows anyways west edmonton mall what an excitement that was every day walking through the mall listening to all the screams and cackles of caged in animals there were like hundreds of them you know, dolphins and mistreated animals in the deep and all kinds of stuff there were sharks apes you had apes there was a bear in your fantasy land which was a huge uh, I don't know, the Bill Van Der Zam, the fantasy gardens of Edmonton. And I don't know, it's depressing. Too many deaths in that mall anyways. The roller coaster accident, I don't know if you heard about that one, but like three or four people went for the roller coaster ride of their lives. Deaths, I should say. Sorry, that's a bit horrible. But uh, I don't know. One night they just went on a ride and the roller coasters went off the rail and they were smashed all the bits on the concrete. I remember I went by there about two days later Everybody was just standing there looking at the wreckage and there were still bloodstains on the concrete. It used to be sort of a pilgrimage, I guess, for people to go by fancy and look at the bloodstains. These malls, they're really spread out. I find they're really spread out, so you have to go, you have to have a car for one thing, and, or it's really hard to go on public transport with these guys. And they, we had a twin, twin stroller that, uh, that we couldn't get onto the bus, so I, we had to get a car. Yeah, well... My parents were killed in the mall when I was a kid. We were at Tim Hortons and snow on the roof and thousands, hundreds of people have killed. So I've, I've always hated malls, you know. And um, we torched this place in St. Catharines last year and it was great. We got it on uh, video. We sent it in to um, CBC or America's Most Wanted and something like that. Of course, you, you wouldn't see it. I mean, it was great, but they won't show it. You know, They don't want stuff like that getting around. But uh, it was it was really really uh, really moved me watching the flames. I don't go to malls a lot except to get groceries. I don't shop at the mall for certain products. I don't like to run into students actually at the mall I teach. <clears throat> and the last thing you want to do is be seen in a place where all your students hang out because it's the only thing you can do for free to go to the mall. And so you know I only sell them. Actually, go to the super center mall, which is where all the kids hang out. And uh, then, of course, we have to go through Hi, Ms. Martin, and always wonder if you got the right mascara on, or if you look the same as at school, and if you, they see you differently, then they'll probably think something else. And, you know, so I really try to avoid the mall for that reason, that, because you know, that's where all the kids hang out. So, no, I don't go to that mall at all. Malls. 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 And I went there with my parents when we had first moved to Toronto. I was quite young. My brother was visiting from his university in the U.S. where he was going to school. And he called it Yorkdale, Canada's fascist center. The man with edible sideburns has stood outside his smoke shop for years in exactly the same slightly rumpled white suit he has slept in his debts and shakes them out like spare change, barks at the patrons, patronizes them, dares them to disagree. This store is his circus, he is the carny, his shelves are filled with freak gifts of nature, and the occasional burglar who interrupts the lifelines of young clerks. He can never keep anyway because he pays them minimum wage.
I'm Sam. And this is Trevor. This is Jimmy. That's Sean. You know, we're all a bit concerned about Anna and James. They used to spend all their time at our mall. Now they're hardly ever here. What's going on? Where are they? What are they doing? We don't all stick together. This could all come falling down. James and Anna make the decision to go to City Hall in search of information regarding the whereabouts of their real and dead parents. Are they buried under this small?
At lunch, they flee the school. Freed from period two or a spare, they drop the pins from their hair or conceal their parochial differences in leather. Take one swift look at the steeple next to their school, the neighbor they most distrust and most admire. Hope no one's watching, and if they are, so what? They march into this mall to pay off their boredom. I stand in front of the store where I tried all morning to sell the impractical black dress with the sleeves seductively slipping down. Actually, it's a manufacturer's defect, but aren't we all? Unsuccessful clientele, cartel, my time sold to the lowest bidder. They genuflect my artificial sunlight. Inside the mall, daylight is continually falsified, the way money is forged ahead and out of our accountability. The students come to me, their faces eager to spend curiosity. I am obscene somehow in ineffectual heels, while the girls are in tunics, the boys in regulation pants pressed firmly shut. The secret's fabric will not disclose, the no comment in their eyes. Stereotypes we must undress in order to redress. Sacred so profane, expletives explode from wafered words wavered. I wave at them. Some are harder, soft sell. They hang out at the coffee shop, but they look in our windows and wonder if it's worth copping a steal. Across from the mall, the school parking lot is a vandal's wet dream. After my shift, one of the boys who always waits is there waiting for me to drive him home from school, waiting to learn another lesson that can be undone. In the early hours of night, we will slip into another uniform of skin, so show each other our wounds, and suggest preferable wars. Welcome to my small laboratory. Um, we have been studying Anna and James for some time. Have we learned anything? Perhaps not. Subjects like these are immeasurable. Look, I, I don't need you. I've got one. Anna and James are desperate. City Hall will not give them the information they want regarding their parents. Anna and James have become victims of bureaucratic runaround. Inaccessible information. <laughs> May I help you? Express lane to self-expression is closed. Try to check in at the next checkout. The woman behind the cosmetics counter offers me little lipstick samples shaped like bullets, bloody at their tips from wars waged against vanity. She promises they won't smudge. She looks like Liza Minnelli, humpty dumped and rebuilt. Waterproof mascara is the great cosmic answer. She has stayed up too late in the same face and had no time to change before work. A bombed out face, but somehow beautiful, reborn of anarchy. Well, maybe I'll try one of those cover sticks. James is discouraged, while Anna has a vision. By the year 2004, the city of Guam will dome the downtown core.
be creating architectural facades from the 1920s. It will become a shopper's paradise. Billionaires from Iceland plan to raise the Titanic in cooperation with the new liberal government. The plans have just been released publicly to support the construction infrastructure through this project. The Titanic will be rebuilt in Halifax as an answer to this province's economic woes, and then the huge structure will be transported westward to make its home in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, a home to the most unusual mall in history, a monument to death and money, a symbol to shop by. As the structure moves across the land, people can drop by and shop. A sense of unity will emerge. People will be able to drive for miles and see the Titanic Mall on the horizon, and Saskatchewan's population will return to economic growth as well. Finally, Anna sees what they instinctively knew all along. I see graves. I think City Hall was a little nervous, giving Anna and James a trailer to live in on the property of their favorite mall. We must now bid farewell to Anna and James, who have now returned from their journey. After hours, the man and woman discuss organic pesticides while they water the floor. They patiently polish the tiles, daily scuffed with so what. He is a billboard of speculation, imagines the cause behind every scratch, each heel mark a possibility scoured for its origin. He hoovers guilt and studies the pattern at night in the mall as she cleans. She says, it's kind of like reading tea leaves, ain't it? <laughs> 